We couldn't have gotten one more carry, Devin Singletary. My God, that cost us a winning day on the morning wager yesterday. But that's okay. 17-7 and overall run on the program. I am joined now by the always joyful Mark Zinno. We will turn his frown upside down over the course of the next 20 minutes. That is my promise to you, the fine viewers of the morning wager. I hate everybody. I hate life. I hate this. I, I just am, okay. I'm no, we're we're gonna stop that. We're gonna stop that. We're gonna stop that. I'm at the stage of self-loathing right now um, because I didn't play Army last night because I said all week long Army minus thirteen and a half was a gift. Army minus thirteen and a half was a gift, and then some schmuck who calls himself sure decided <laughs> to freaking put a huge wager on Temple moving the line. And what happens when you are a big vagine like me? You get scared off and you never played the thing. And all of a sudden, I walked away from Army, an easy no-sweat winner. And, you know, instead, went with Devin Singletary for the one poor bastard who bought my fucking package last night. And just, you know, whatever. Anyway. If I reminded you that you are also in the United States Army, am I tempting fate by saying, should I Should I have not done that? Am I poking the bear more? Was that, was that a, I mean, a, a mistake? You know, it, it, it honestly had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with that. Okay. Temple was one of the worst football yes. teams country and they were 107th against the run last time i checked jeff munkin all he does is run the ball a lot and i just I, just it's you know there's so many variables in this damn stuff that just drive me crazy and i was not a happy camper last night at all I also not a happy <laughs> camper because the new york giants decided that they were going to go up against the worst run defense in football last night and thought that giving Daniel Jones throwing the ball like 40 times was the way to do it and not run the ball against the worst run defense in the league. Subsequently, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm done now. I want to quit. I, I, I want off this program. I, I don't want to. No, no, no. no. Stay. Stay with me. Stay with me. I haven't had a meal yet. My coffee is making me nauseous. I should have drank one. Jeez, that's oh, no. Man. That doesn't make any Dan, Dan Alexander is on one today. Thank oh, you, Dan, joining us, by the way. He's on the East Coast with, with us. Okay. All right. Now, you know who is happy so today? close to my mouth. Stop doing that. Put it over BP's head. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. All right. You know who is happy today, Mark? The L.A. Dodgers, because they are the National League West champions. I'm not happy because I bet the Padres last night, and uh, yeah. they fell apart late. But – Te- teams that have clinched uh, have uh, have clinched a playoff spot or a division have tended to uh, I- enjoy a little bit of the bubbly, as you might think they would. And then they stink at playing baseball the next day. Uh, we talked about that, playing at the drunk Astros earlier this week. That was a winner with the Mariners. So do we play against a drunk, a potentially drunk Dodgers team going to the thin air? Okay. Who knows? Maybe they get high, too, out in Denver. That's legal. It's okay. Let's put this all together. I'll, I'll save you the okay. trouble here. Okay. The Dodgers were in LA last night. They partied late into the night. They got on a flight. They flew to Denver. And now they're supposed to play a baseball game. Uh, yeah. So my guess is they're not going to be ready to play at all. Freddie Freeman uh, also got injured last night. Did you see that little tidbit? That Freddie Freeman yes. had to leave the game last evening uh, with a little bit of a, a boo-boo. So uh, he, he will not play tonight at all. Um, and that should be another thing that helps the, the, uh, the Colorado Rockies here. That said, I still think, BP, that this mm-hmm. probably may be – I'd probably lean f- first five uh, on the run line for Colorado because do we really want Colorado's bullpen involved in anything mm, at they've all? They've been questionable this year. I mean, if Cal Quantrill isn't good enough – to get through this, then guess what? Uh, the Rockies probably aren't. Now, right now, the Dodgers aren't on a starter undecided. If you can find a first five line or whatever, just make sure you play action or, you know, home pitcher must start because who knows who the Dodgers are going to put up there at this point in time. I'm not sure that it matters. I don't think the Dodgers are going to hit much. I don't think they're going to score much, but I would co sign first five on the run line, run line for the game uh, for Colorado because. The Dodgers are drunk, and now they're high, uh, and they're in Colorado. 
Still technically have home field to play for the Dodgers, but yeah, drunk and high, probably not a way to win a baseball game. Remember that guy threw a no-hitter on LSD in the 70s? You don't see anyone doing that anymore these days. Really? Who was No, it wasn't him. He was he pitched uh he was up for the, I think it was for the Pirates. They made a documentary on Netflix about it. It was not been. him either. Yes, Might have been. but uh yes. Okay. Well, the last weekend of the season, Mark Zeno, I think typically you want to, you know, and this goes for any sport, there's a must-win tax, right? These teams who have to win to get in the playoffs, and you're not getting good prices. The books know they have to win, so they're they're jacking the price up. Well, for my half of the double play, and this is a client play for me as I try to get back to track, look, football's been great, soccer's been great all year. Baseball has not been great this week. It's been absolutely terrible this week. We are looking to get back on track, though, on Friday And we are looking to get back on track with the Milwaukee Brew Crew, who are home underdogs to the Mets. Now, the Mets have had the last two days off because of the inclement weather in Atlanta. Hope you're safe, Mark, by the way. It seems that you are. Uh, I think those two days off. That's underwater is my bank account. That's all right. (laughs) No, that's underwater is my client's bank account. So, sorry, guys. I think you're a beautiful man still. And let's uh, let's give Mark Zitto a thumbs up and cheer him up, guys. Come on. All right. Let's also give a thumbs up for the Milwaukee Brewers, who I think uh, are going to be motivated at the ballpark tonight. Even though they've already won the division, they're pretty much locked into the three seed in the National League. Look, there's a chance, Mark, they could play the Mets in the wild card round. And by competing in this series and forcing the Mets into a win-and-get-in situation in Monday's doubleheader with Atlanta... That would benefit them, obviously. So I don't think the Brewers are no-shows tonight uh, at American Family Field. This price, to me, is just too – I can't pass up the price. Milwaukee at home as a a, a dog? They're great. They're facing Manea, the Cabbage Patch doll, your guy. Maybe that'll make you bring a smile to your face if we could throw up the Cabbage Patch doll thing. But, uh, again, they're they're top 10 WRC and batting average against lefties at all. Give me Millie Wauke on the money line tonight against the Mets. I think the Mets, the two days off, breaks your rhythm in baseball. It's not It's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. Again, that's a 3% client play on the Brew Crew. Hmm. Millie Wauke is also a gonquin for the good land. The good land. It is. It is. And it will be the good land tonight, at least we hope. Um, this We're going to get to the football games tonight and our best bet coming up. But speaking of the good land, this weekend, football, got a great deal going on at wagertalk.com, where if you buy a three-month all-access pass, we throw in an additional fourth month of service free of charge, instant $299 savings. So you get 120 days worth of plays, less than $49 per week, $7 per day. That is a massive savings. Number one in football this season, yours truly. 68% 68% overall in NFL and college, number one in NFL. Perfect 6-0 and with NFL sides this year, Zeno, and I've got three yeah. locked yep. and loaded for Sunday. Folks, here is a good plan for you. Go to wt.buzz slash bp and buy his. And by chance, if you get lost and end up at wt.buzz slash mz, just keep moving on. So that is the best advice I can give you for the rest of this weekend. <laughs> Very much so. So They're confused. Uh, They're putting on football record. helmets and confused. I have no record to tout. Uh, I have no. I, I don't have a bird in a hand and two in the bush. I have no bird. I have no bush. And, and here we go. Uh, that said, Brian Power. Also, I heard that we are flexing picks. We have flex picks now because I saw that yes. on the couple like channel. And I, I had something totally different in mind when they talked about flexing picks. I figured I might have had a shot with those if we were flexing picks. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. You can bench more than me. I think everybody knows that, though. That's so about the only thing I have to do at this point. It's about the yes. only thing I have. <laughs> Anything involved in weightlifting, you can do better than me. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> That's it. Why am I still on the screen so long? I mean, what's going on here? Why, what happened? <laughs> it is good. I mean, like, honestly, I, I got tired of looking at myself. I think the audience did, too. I think, thank you very much. You know, I mean, I, I just, <laughs> you're trying to torture me as I just talk into a screen out loud to nobody and hear Brian Power in the background going, yes, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. Anyway, let's move on to our best. Yeah, you know, I don't like any of your Brian Power voices for the record, okay? They're all wrong. I don't sound like any of your voices, your nerd voice, no, whatever that like was. I don't sound like any of your voices at all. Go ahead. All right. Well, want to talk about Carlos Rodon? Your boy, he's a big I favorite mean, tonight against Pittsburgh. This is our show best bet. Right 
<laughs> I wanted to talk about Carlos Radon. Trust me. Another this is our team. show best bet. Another drunk team. The New York yes. Yankees. They've won the AL yes. East. Yes, they're still competing with Cleveland for home field advantage in the American oh, League yeah. playoffs. But again, we want to play the sober team against the intoxicated team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think they're sober heading into the Bronx. We will back them at an underdog price. I don't. I say yes. screw the run line, Mark Zinno. Take him at the underdog price because your boy Radon should not be this big of a favorite. Jones is a very good pitcher for Pittsburgh. Yes, but he hasn't been good as of late, which is why I want to take the run line. Um, oh, since well, then. <laughs> I'm just telling you honestly. Uh, he came off the IL, five runs, three runs, two runs, two runs, six runs. It, it hasn't really been all that great. Um, but nonetheless, we will just do the thing where we fade the uh, team that celebrated way into the night last night, uh, and that would be the Yankees. So uh, let's take the Pirates here. I know BP wants the money line. Tell you what, just do them both, money line and run line. Maybe do a little bit of a hedge there, and uh, that'll be the show best bet for today. Jared Jones up against Carlos Radon seems like pretty favorable for, uh, you know, for, for, for Pittsburgh because Radon stinks. All right, there you go. Show best bet, Pittsburgh Pirates. We're just going to let them. We're going to leave Zinno on the leave, screen leave, again. Leave. I thought it was going to happen again. Anyway. Yeah, I was, I was like, now yeah. he's doing it on now he's yes. doing it all. I, I'll tell you, you are a beautiful man, Mark Zitto. All right, so to recap, our, our our double play, Zitto is taking the Rockies plus one and a half. I'm taking the Brew Crew. Show best bet is the Pittsburgh Pirates on the money line. Drop your favorite Major League Baseball bets uh, for Friday down in the comments section below. And if you have not already, smash that thumbs up giving us a like. Why would you not? We're just going to keep putting Mark Zeno on the screen until you do so. There is Friday college football. There are two games, two games that are pretty interesting, actually, tonight. I think, Mark, uh, you know, Temple Army was won pretty much for the betters last night. But tonight we got Rutgers-Washington as Washington makes its first trek east as a member of the Big Ten Conference. We also have a ranked Miami team, a Miami team that I think has as good a chance as anybody for an undefeated regular season. They are hosting one of the most disappointing teams in the country, Virginia Tech. Um, I'm going to talk about the Rutgers game real quick because I think uh, – I disagree. You talk about how you just – the sharp money scared you off of Army last night. I think the way this line is moving is wrong on this Washington-Rutgers game. Washington, I, I talked about this with Joe Ranieri on the College Football Today show yesterday here on Wager Talk uh, TV. And one thing I didn't mention is Washington, who do they have on deck next week? Is Michigan in a re massive revenge spot for the loss in last year's national championship game. Now, I get that most of the players are gone from that team, but, and the coaching staff is gone. But still, I think that's a big deal for Washington. Yes, the defense was great last week against Northwestern, but Northwestern didn't have its leading rusher. Uh, two goal line stand situations for the Washington defense as well. Northwestern had it goal to go twice and got just three points out of those drives. Obviously settled for a field goal and then turned it over on downs. Rutgers should have beaten Virginia Tech, who I know you'll talk about that Vatek Miami game real quick in just a little bit. But Rutgers led Vatek 23-7 after three quarters on the road last week before they needed the last-minute field goal to seal the win, but they missed two field goals, the Scarlet Knights. They turned it over twice inside the Hokies' five, a fumble and on downs. Rutgers' offensive line will be the difference in this game. I like the Scarlet Knights at home. It's only one data point, Mark, but the only time so far we've seen one of these new Big Ten teams from out west come east was last week, USC at Michigan. What happened? USC lost to a Michigan team that was basically running a service academy offense. Give me the Scarlet Knights, the team from Piscataway. Mm. Good old Piscataway, New Jersey. Um, the only thing I have on Miami, Virginia Tech here, like, God, I, I was so high on Virginia Tech coming into this season, and they have done nothing but disappoint. Um, Kieran Drones, Kyron, is it Kieran or Kyron? I forget what Kyron. you say. But Kyron Drones has been a little bit of a disappointment, to say the least, um, coming into the year. It's like, you know, the, the game plan against Vanderbilt in the opener was terrible uh, for, for the, 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 the Hokies. Um, that was another loss of mine because they were supposed to get over 30 and they didn't in their team total. Uh, nonetheless, um, you know, they just haven't really been good. And to lose a home game at Lane Stadium 
against Rutgers feels like a, a pretty decent low point. And if people have asked me, is, is this the week Virginia Tech finally shows up? No. I mean, the big thing is, is that, again, this is a, a Hokies team that gave up 27 in regulation to Vanderbilt. They gave up 26 to Rutgers. These are not really high-level offenses. They're going up against a Miami team that scored at least 41 in every single game that they've played with Cam Ward, at quarterback, who's got 14 touchdowns and two interceptions, is now leading the Heisman voting. I, I just look over, honestly. I mean, Virginia Tech should be able to score 17 to 20 in this game. Miami easily gets to 30, don't they? Like, their team total has got to be somewhere around 29 or 30 and a half, and it, it just feels like, you know, th that Virginia Tech's not going to be able to do anything to stop Miami. Um, is there a fear that Miami is reading a little bit of their own press clippings? Probably. I might have thought that last week. Not really a look-ahead spot. they got to go to Cal next week. I mean, who doesn't love Berkeley? I don't know. I've never been there. But um, the look-ahead spot That's a big game. Next... What, the Cal game? Yeah, I mean, it's a, a, you, hey, we talk about these West, these teams from out West of the Big Ten going East now. I mean, ACs, I mean, that's a, that is a long, the, the old Miami to Berkeley is not a one tank trip. No. So, I, and I Cal it. had been playing well before last week. So, I got it. But I think I, I would wait. I would wait and play. I would, might play Cal next week, but Miami has to go to Rutgers, I mean, to Louisville the following week, a ranked mm. Louisville team. They decide, you know, the ACC. So, Cal is a little bit of a look ahead spot. It could be a flat spot. So, if, if you're, if you're looking ahead, you kind of want Miami to destroy Virginia Tech, win huge, and then be laying a big number in Berkeley, um, you know, for that situation. Because, again, in reality, uh, yeah, I mean, they played in the swamp in the opener, right? That game was actually mm. in Gainesville. Eight. Yes. Okay. Well, this will be their first true ACC road contest next week. That's a look-ahead spot. I think we can, we can talk about that next week. 10.30 late game. That'll be interesting. Anyway, all I say this, I, I would bet the over tonight. I, I mean, if the only way it doesn't go over is if somehow Virginia Tech's defense holds Cal holds Miami rather to less than 35. Like if Miami gets to 35, this thing's going over. There shouldn't be any reservations about it. That's their team total, right. by the way, 35. 35. Yeah. I mean, that's, yep. you know, um, that's what, that's what it feels like the way the game script goes, but I would take the over just in case. I mean, Miami's not going to stop running it up. That's the other part. You know, like they haven't really wow. taken their foot off the gas pedal at any point in time because Miami loves beating Miami's chest. And so uh, over 53 and a half feels like the number for me. And, you know, Cristobal's not going to take a knee. <laughs> Obviously, he's proven that uh, throughout his coaching career, uh, even when he should. So, all right, that's going to do it for the morning wager. Mark Zeno, I could look at you all day, buddy. Thank you for joining me I this hate morning. You. I do hate you. <laughs> And Dan, well, let's, just, actually... let's just admire this incredible man, everybody, for just one second. All right. On that note, I think that does it for the morning wager. Follow Can him. What? Why don't you? <laughs> I believe oh, wait, you didn't. You, you, you didn't give me a chance to promote what I have up on my page. You yes, I did. Didn't. We did five minutes ago, and then you told everyone not to go to it. Remember that we oh, we've yeah. been through that. <laughs> yes, yes. I believe oh. you can be found at Mark Zino. On X.com. Imagine that. That's yeah. very uh, you're, you're appropriate. You're going there and just asking me, like, what, what, Zeno, what do you like this week? And then doing the exact opposite. Save yourself Stop. the time and energy. Okay. <laughs> He's Mark Zeno. I'm Brian Power at Brian Power underscore wins. Look, there's two Mark Zeno's on the screen right now. Until next time, guys, have a great weekend. Let's cash some tickets. <laughs> <laughs>